Hi guys, today we are painting some iconic autumn illustrations, all the favourites, and perfect for all you bullet journalers out there, um, or if you just like painting little things, as you know I do. So grab your paints and let's get going. Okay, we're going to paint some fun little illustrations. Um, sort of the kind of, almost like, I guess like sort of icons of autumn. I'm just doing a little line so I've got a nice straight line to go with. So the first thing is that strange like autumn classic that has is very much a modern phenomenon, the pumpkin spice latte. Guys, I've got a confession to make. I've never actually had one. Um, so I'm just doing a really basic cup shape for that one. Then next, just making sure I've got a good spacing. Um, next, I'm gonna do a bubble hat. So I've got a nice chunky uh, rim of the hat and then really simply sort of a curve on top and then a bobble. Then I'm gonna do a lovely roaring fire and I'm just going to draw out some log shapes, that's all that is. And then we're going to have a slice of pumpkin pie. Which is also another thing that I don't think I've ever had before. Just never really been that sort of into eating pumpkins, but something I must try, okay. And last off, something that I have already found this month I'm doing a lot of, is a basket of apples. So I'm just doing really simple shapes here for you all. And we'll have a few apples sort of coming out the side and a few in there. So these are very much like cute illustrations, um, but we're still doing watercolor, so I've just done very simple shapes and we'll be making up the rest with our painting. So okay, let's start off first off with our pumpkin spiced latte. It's going to have a lovely sort of plume of foam whipped cream on the top. So I'm just mixing up some sort of shadowy colours in my palette. I'm sorry that you can't see absolutely everything in there, but We'll start off with a lovely sort of warm colour and I'm going to use unpainted space to create the sort of whipped cream top. So just using sort of wet watercolour go for a sort of it's like a loose outline I suppose and then suddenly we've got ourselves a lovely whipped cream topping let's pop a little bit more orange in there and then we need I mean I I'm sure a pumpkin spice latte is available from many places gosh there's so much fluff on my brush today but I think a lot of us associate it with a certain coffee company but I'm just going to do just going to do a little circle in that rather famous dark pine green because that's the beauty of these these are simple little illustrations. Okay, lovely. So that one we're going to just leave and then we'll do a bit of shadow and detailing on. Time for a bobble hat, which I'm excited about starting to wear. So I'm going to start off just by doing some really simple sort of stripes. And by using a larger brush here, I'm using my size two brush. It's allowing me to just do this brush stroke in one 
simple motion. And then I will do the pom pom as well on top. So what I'm doing, start on off, start on off, starting off with just a very sort of fluffy dash around the edge, clean off my brush, and then I'm just gonna dab inwards. I mean, there's so much paint here. I just don't need any more. And that's looking really nice. And then I think I'm gonna get some Prussian blue and this time I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush and this is almost a bit like the vase painting that we've been doing with the house plants and things. I'm going to do a sort of outline shape first then we're going to draw that colour in And then we're going to come back in for some detail with this once it has dried. But for now that's a really nice start. It's funny, like a, a, a bobble hat is not shiny so it doesn't necessarily need to have the light shining on it but it just helps with creating shape and roundness. Right, next off we're going to do a blazing fire. So we've got, we need to get some orange into play. We also need some yellow. And I'm going to use a technique here very similar to when I've been doing autumn leaf painting. So I'm going to start off with a nice light bright but wet colour in the middle and I'm just the shape of my brush strokes is just reflecting that curve on the outside that I've drawn and then I'm going to take some orange and I'm going to just bring it up on the outsides there and start to do you can see it's almost a bit like the sort of the serrated edge leaves. I think I'll just draw up my yellow a little bit more. So with the water, it's great, I don't need any more colour there. I can just start to blend these two together. And I quite like the idea when the flames sort of get high, they're almost so bright white that it's hard to see them. Lovely. Let's get a tiny bit of colour in there. So. And then you always get a few little sparks coming off. Really nice. It's fun, even though they're simple, using little bits of watercolour technique just shows that you're still sort of showing off your, your skills when it comes to the watercolour but it doesn't have to be always a, a botanical painting or a highbrow style landscape. Now I'm going to do the ends of my logs first so I've got a bit of yellow ochre I'm just doing little swirls we don't see everything there but we do see the ones at the front. Lovely. Okay let that dry let's move on to the pumpkin pie. So I'm always as a painter always thinking about my timings because I'm usually working on a few commissions at once and so I'm often painting one thing letting it dry moving on to the next so this is how I like to work. So I've got quite a lot of orange there cleaned off my brush and I'm just allowing that colour to stretch and fill the page. You might just get the tiniest bit of shine on that pumpkin, pumpkin pie. 
lovely. And then we'll do the top as well. And I might just add a little bit of yellow ochre to my orange, just to get a little bit of a differentiation in color. Looks like it's had a lovely caramelised top. I might just add a little ooh, bit of burnt sienna without the fluff on my brush. I like the idea that pie has just caught the edge. And now a lovely trug of apples. A trug, if you don't know, is a, is a sort of um, a type of basket but it's not a woven basket it's more like long strips of wood so it's almost more like a boat I suppose so we'll do the band along the top And then I'm going to sort of paint the strips along here, also making sure that I don't paint over where my apples are going to go. And I'm just allowing the sort of unpainted space to create the stripes. And then over the top, and of course across the back, but making sure not to go too far down because we're going to have a trug full of apples there. Okay, so that's our first layer of everything, getting in our simple strokes and now we can go back to our pumpkin spice latte and I'm going to use a smaller brush. So I always put a few brushes in there and then I have all these ones off camera um, and I always have different favorite brushes. I think I'm gonna use my teeny, teeny, tiny ones. What have we got? We've got 10 tenths. Oh, we've got two 10 tenths, okay just need one and I am now going to start doing little bits of shadow so I've got burnt sienna and French ultramarine in the, with the tiny weeniest brush now I'm just going to tilt my page just to see it's just a handy way to, for me to see if it's catching the light if anything's wet here so it's a little bit wet here so I just need to be careful with my hand. I need even more water on the brush. When you've got a teeny tiny brush like this, it is very easy to run out of paint quite quickly. So whilst I'm outlining, I'm also using that as the opportunity to get a bit of shadow into play. So I've switched up brushes after doing that initial very, very fine line. And we'll be rubbing out the pencil. So we'll be able to see just sort of how nice these fine painted lines look. So this is quite a good tip for sort of creating roundness and shape if you have got 
a white object, but you want to give it a bit of roundness. So you can do your outlines very fine. And then with a clean, wet brush, you can just come in and smooth them. Now I think I'll just do a little bit more of a shadow underneath the top of that cup. Lovely. Very happy. Um, and we could do a tiny bit more detail on that central circle. <laughs> Maybe just a... Just the hint of the pattern we're all quite familiar with. Even though the pattern's normally done in white. It's kind of nice to do a little interpretation of it, isn't it? lovely and then something I think could be kind of fun might be hard to control it so I want to do a little splatter of like cinnamon on the top of that cup there so I'm just going to take my finger and just I'm going to probably lean in here there we go just do a little splatter on that cup so the splatter's sort of gone everywhere but I I kind of like it okay so we're coming back to our bobble hat next and I want to do some fun kind of chunky knit stitching on here. So I've got my Prussian blue and I'm just coming back in with a series of dashes. To make this chunky, chunky design. I've actually got a um, Christmas cactus worksheet on my website at the moment, which you can have um, links to in the episode notes below. Um, and it's a, a PDF worksheet and it's three pounds, but you can learn how to create all sorts of Christmas cacti, but you can also learn how to paint one with a Christmas jumper on which is kind of fun. So it's um, looking at doing lovely kind of uh, knitted patterns and things, which I think is all kinds of fun. So I'm just missing out the middle because we're gonna do a little bit of a Christmas pattern on this hat. I just wanna make the edges nice and chunky. Whilst that's drying, let's just have another look at the red rim here. So I'm going to do a sort of red stitch in the gaps. nice one. So I like the idea of doing a little snowflake design. So I've got a slightly smaller brush. <laughs> and I know we're in autumn and this is autumn but I know quite a lot of people who are very excited about getting their, their woolly hats on. So just a dot in the middle, dash at the top, and then two angled ones at the side. I 
That's kind of fun. And then a little sort of diamond shape. looking nice and we'll come back and do a little bit of last detail on that. I will just fill in some of those gaps just down there. Okay our flaming little bonfire. Now my logs I'm gonna do little stripes in burnt sienna but then I need a bit more darkness so I'm going to get my shadow mix and even though it is a it is a fire so it's a it's emanating lots of heat and light we want to get a little bit of shadow and maybe a few more rings on those tree ends. And just sort of dabbing the brush around the edges of the log to give it a gnarly bark. Some of your logs might not, you might not see the outer edge. And we might just do one off in the distance. Really nice. Okay, let's add that shadow to the ones we've not added it to yet. And then we'll just do a bit of a swirl in the middle. Looking good. Okay, pumpkin pie. A lovely pastry. So we'll have a yellow ochre pastry top there. If you can find little places to sort of leave unpainted, that always helps with the uh, bringing your little illustration to life. And I like the idea of a little bit of burnt sienna just along the bottom. And then maybe a nice little bit of detailing on there. Now that is a little whipped cream swirl, 
I've just currently got a line through it because I drew in pencil. But we can make that as well. So we're just a bit like the pumpkin spice latte. We're going to use the unpainted space. Let's just let that come to life a bit. Okay. And then last of all, we've got our trug and our apples. So let's paint some of these apples. I like the idea of a sort of green and red kind of rosy apple. So I start off first with my with my green. I've got a nice sort of mixture of sap green and cadmium yellow here. I'll do a little shape, leave a little bit of unpainted space for a bit of shine. We can just have some apple shapes poking out the top here. Always leaving a little bit of unpainted space for that shine. And then, not too much colour on my brush. Just blending those in. That one's just got a bit too much water on it. But that's okay, we can just leave that one green. When your watercolour is sort of puddling, like that one at the top is, it's, it can be hard to actually get any kind of control on the blend you want. And now let's do some more detailing on the actual trug itself. So oh, I might get a smaller brush actually. Burnt Sienna. And I'm just going back over those lines that I painted in the um, yellow ochre first off and smoothing it a little bit and also now the underside we can put some burnt sien down but also maybe a little bit of shadow. Always makes things pop a bit, doesn't it? Right, everything's at a really nice simple stage. I'm just gonna let everything dry fully and then we'll come back in for some detail. Everything's dried, we've got um, the pencil been rubbed out, so I'm just going to do some last minute bits and pieces. So first for our pumpkin spice latte, just a little bit of shadow. Nice. And that one is done. <laughs> Simple as that. Next I'm going to do some last bits of detail on my bobble hat. So I've got some red and I'm just mixing in the tiniest bit of shadow and adding to that initial red that I put in some extra little stitches and 
and a little bit to the bottom of that bobble. And also, just with a very sort of faint dilute mix, I'm just going to add in a few dabs of colour with the Prussian blue to the edges of this section here, just to give it a bit more texture. And then to take some of the Prussian blue and pop it into the shadow mix, which already has quite a lot of blue into it. And give those stitches just a little bit extra. And around the edge. Seems a lot of detail for a bobble hat but these extra little bits really make it jump off the page. And then a little bit of shadow. I guess we should have the shadow really all going in the opposite direction from the flames, but um, I've only just thought of that. <laughs> so instead, we won't worry too much. So this is looking really nice. And um, instead of, well, it's weird, isn't it? I'm trying to think now, would you have, you'd have a, sort of a, a weird kind of glow, I suppose, coming from the bottom of the flames, but I'm, so I'm doing a sort of warmish uh, bit of shading underneath there. Pumpkin pie, will give a little bit more detail on that little swirl. And I think we should do that little splatter again, like I did with the the latte. So I just take my brush and middle finger and just try and angle the splatters. But I really like that the splatters kind of go in all directions. I'm going to add a tiny bit more. I really like doing that. Lovely, a little bit of shadow. Long shadow. And then the truck of apples. So we need to add some little stalks and leaves to our apples. So with my very little brush, let's just get in that detail there. Have your stalks sort of going in various different directions. And then a little leaf or two. because of course they're all freshly picked from the orchard. So we've done a whole load of autumn leaves in a previous tutorial, which you'll be able to find on my channel. Um, and I mean, autumn leaves are just the most beautiful thing to behold. So I highly recommend going and having a go at that. And then I think just for the back edge of that trug, we can just leave it at a little line like that. And then I quite like the idea of a few extra texture lines. With a sort of slightly dry brush and then a little bit of shadow. So we've got a few things at play with our shadow here. 
I've got a few apples that a bit of shadow from each other. Um, then we've got a bit of shadow on the trug. And then finally, a bit of shadow on the ground. I don't overthink my shadows with these things. I just like to get a little bit of something under the base. images. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as me. I just love painting small things, I can't get enough of it. Um, so I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. Your support uh, just enables me to keep making these videos and if you enjoyed it hit the like button and uh, comment below to let me know the kind of thing you'd like me to paint next time and hitting subscribe means that you will never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye.